He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from, from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Mark Levin here, our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. For the pro-Hamas Nazi American media, not all civilians are alike, as I posted this morning. The Sunday show hosts expressed their displeasure with Israel defending itself. Insisting that Israel is not doing enough and must do more to protect civilians. Of course, not one of them explains how Israel is to fight upwards of 50,000 Palestinian terrorists in Gaza. Many of whom have moved to South Gaza and, as is known to all, use the civilians to protect themselves. 50,000 terrorists. It's relevant and important to note that not one of the Sunday host has ever expressed this kind of concern about the slaughter of civilians in Iran, which is ongoing, the slaughter of civilians in China, which is ongoing, the slaughter of civilians in Syria, which is ongoing, and so forth and so on. There's something horribly immoral about the American media and how they report with self-righteous indignation their supposed concern for civilian deaths, but only the collateral deaths of civilians in Gaza that Israel is trying, like no other military on the planet, to avoid. That's certainly not the case with any terrorist group or state like Hamas and Iran, among numerous others, who slaughter their own civilians in order to stay in power and impose their Islamist ideology and target and slaughter civilians in Israel Yemen, and anywhere else where they think they can achieve their Islamist objectives. But it's time to face facts, America. For the Marxists and the Islamists, of course, for the American media, for the Democrat Party, for the Biden regime, they are using civilian deaths as a weapon against Israel just as Hamas intended, while they ignore all the purposeful, targeted, and mass slaughter of civilians taking place throughout the globe. Only Israel faces relentless media attention and condemnation, because the media and the Democrat Party and the Biden regime are as anti-Semitic as our colleges and universities and the Islamist front groups funded and networked in our own country that feed him, that feed them this data. And they do not want Israel to defeat Hamas. Because the Jewish lives in Israel are simply not important enough for the Marxist ideology to reign. For the Biden-Blinken foreign policy to continue. And for the 
contemptible, unconscionable American media that supports all of it. All of it. What about the civilians, they keep asking the Israelis? What about the civilians? What about them? What about them? It's a fair question. Who are these civilians? Who are these civilians? Oh, they're Palestinians. Okay. The media keep telling us a fiction. That there's a huge difference between Hamas Palestinian terrorists and the Palestinian population. This is what they keep telling us. Is it true? And if it's true, based on what? A couple of interviews? No, it's a lie, actually. There's almost no daylight between the Palestinian terrorists who call themselves Hamas and the Palestinian citizens in the Gaza Strip and in Judea and Samaria. We know this as a matter of fact. And I've pointed out to you in the past reports that have been done, polls and surveys that have been conducted that tell us exactly this. That 85% Let me read this to you from the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs, although they didn't conduct the poll or the survey. Assuming my computer plays along here, Mr. Producer, which of course it won't. Here we are. A new poll, this came out about 10 days ago. I mentioned it in passing. Supporting terror and rejecting peace. That's the Palestinians. The results of a new market research conducted by the Arab World for Research and Development, all rad, and I mention this as I say, but I want to underscore it. Among Palestinians living in the Gaza Strip in Judea and Samaria, the so-called West Bank, give a penetrating insight into the mindset of the Palestinians, writes the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs, a think tank. Now, you'll note that most of this has been ignored by most of the American media because they want their narrative to continue. The results of new market research, for over three decades, the international community has supported both the Palestinians and the Palestinian Authority. The results of the survey show that Palestinians overwhelmingly support terrorism, reject peace, and are fundamentally ungrateful towards the countries that have supported and funded them. The Palestinian attitudes reflected in the survey do not grow in a vacuum. Instead, they are representative of the complete adoption of the constant and poisonous message of the Palestinian Authority. They are an accurate, albeit bleak and painful reflection of the total implosion of the so-called Oslo paradigm. That was the first peace in our time deal involving Rabin and the other leftists. If the international community truly seeks peace in the Middle East and a brighter future for all its residents, policies must change and a new paradigm must be adopted. Now let's take a look at some of these results. Palestinians support terror, reject peace, and deny Israel's right to exist. When taken as a whole, the results indicate that an overwhelming percentage of the Palestinians support the October 7 massacre, 75%. Reject coexistence with Israel, 86%. Are committed to the restoration of, quote-unquote, historic Palestine as a final solution, 71%. And support the creation of a Palestinian state from the river to the sea, in other words, the obliteration of the Jews, 75%. As the end of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Interestingly, there's more support for the October 7 massacre from the Palestinian residents in Judea, Samaria, 83%, than those in the Gaza Strip, 64%. Support for terror organizations, the Palestinian positive perception of the terror organizations remains high, despite their role in carrying out the massacre and the disastrous results. Breaking down the response, how come none of the Sunday shows did this, Mr. Producer? 
How come Jake Tapper has all completely ignored this? How come Wolf Blitzer has? How come Joe Scarba and Mika Brzezinski have ignored this, Andrea Mitchell? How about all the reprobates on MSNBC and CNN? Not one of them. Because they push a fiction. It's the Jews. We get this from Muslims on this network, these networks. We get this from atheists on these networks. We get this from Democrats on these networks, all of whom really are Democrats. We get this from self-hating Jews on these networks. Their hate for Jews and their support for anti-Semitism is quite diverse. They've struck the diversity chord. Breaking down the response, 76% believe that Hamas plays a somewhat to very positive role. 84% believe Palestinian Islamic Jihad, that's the Muslim Brotherhood, plays a somewhat to very positive role. 80% believe that Fatah's terror wing, the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigades, plays a somewhat to very positive role. And 88, excuse me, 89%, 9 out of 10, believe that Hamas's armed wing, the Al-Qassam Brigades, plays a somewhat to very positive function. Does this sound like people who want to live in peace? A brand new country? Does it? Palestinians hold fundamentally racist views. Looking at this survey, the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs declares and declares correctly. And I dare Jake Tapper to take this information with graphs and present it. I dare Wolf Blitzer to do it. I dare Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski to do it. I dare them all. All of them. When asked about U.S. and Western support for Israel against the terrorists, against the terrorists, 91.5% agreed with the attitude that the support is the result of the, quote, influence of the Israeli lobby. The Jews are behind it. 85.5% agreed that the support is the result of, quote, hatred of Arabs, unquote. You know, it's interesting a uh, majority of the Israeli Arabs support Israel in this war, and many of them are fighting in this war. I guess it depends what Arabs you ask. 79.5% agreed with the belief that the support for Israel is the result of hatred of Muslims in Islam. The brainwashing and indoctrination is going well, hasn't it? But don't worry, Blinken and Biden have a solution. Take Judea and Samaria, the so-called West Bank, and give it to the Palestinians. Because they're different than Hamas. Hamas is Palestinian. The Islamic Jihad of Palestine is Palestinian. The PLO is Palestinian. The Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigades, they are Palestinian. Along the side, the disdain for the U.S. and Western countries. The Palestinians also believe that moderate Arab countries also play a negative role. According to these Palestinians who were surveyed, the United Arab Emirates plays the most negative role, 96%. Followed by Saudi Arabia, 95.5%. Egypt, 84.6%. And Jordan, 75.6%. All these countries have made peace with Israel or consider the possibility. While support for terror organizations is high, over 87%, the Palestinians believe that the Palestinian Authority plays a negative role. Only 23% believe that Fatah plays a positive role. When asked who should govern the Gaza Strip and the areas in Judea and Samaria that are under the control of the Palestinian Authority, 8.4% support the Palestinian Authority. In comparison, 85.8% supported Hamas continuing to play a role in the Palestinian government. What do you think of that, folks? These are the obvious, the moderate and peaceful Palestinians. And they conclude, when asked who would emerge victorious from this war, 72.6% said Palestine would. 74.3% expect the war to end with a Palestinian victory. 
that, quote, achieves the liberation of Gaza from the Israeli invasion, unquote. Gaza was never Palestinian, not by any argumentation, no matter how spun. Nobody occupies it but the Palestinians. So when you're talking about 90%, 88%, 84%, at lowest 79%, ladies and gentlemen, there's almost no difference between the Hamas Palestinian terrorists and the Palestinian population. I'm not talking about all Palestinians all over the world. I'm talking about Palestinians in the Middle East. And now you know why Talib, Rashida Talib, is who she is. Between her ears, I'm talking about. Because this is the kind of poison, cancerous, barbaric hate that has been passed down to her. But these are the facts. And it's funny how CNN, MSNBC, the New York Times, the Washington Post, all the outlets that reach most of the people have killed this. They've smothered it with a pillow. What about the Palestinian civilians? I don't know. How many of them have been mass raped? I'm going to get into this. How many of them have been decapitated? How many of them have been burned by motorcycle fumes and been tattooed? I'm not done. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Mark Levin here, folks, with essential information about a possible digital dollar and its impact on IRAs and 401ks. Educate yourself before a digital dollar comes with Augusta Precious Metals downside of the digital dollar report. Created due to popular demand, this report is packed with important digital dollar insights. Best of all, it shares a strategy smart investors have used to hedge against economic uncertainties like the digital dollar. Act now to learn more with Augusta Precious Metals. Do it for your financial future. Receive the free downside of the digital dollar report today by texting LEVIN to 68592. That's L-E-V-I-N to 68592. Again, text LEVIN to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text aid and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Hamas is Palestinian. The PLO is Palestinian. They have numerous terrorist organizations, not one peace organization of the Middle East. I want to explain this to George Stephanopoulos, the latest reprobate. Every death that's taking place is the responsibility of the Palestinians. In this case, Hamas. Not the Jews, not the Israelis, not the Arab Israelis, the Palestinians and their terrorist militia. It is their responsibility. They have done this. They have done it in the past, and they will continue to do it if they're not stopped. More when I return. Mark Levin here, folks, with essential information about a possible digital dollar and its impact on IRAs and 401ks. Educate yourself before a digital dollar comes with Augusta Precious Metals' downside of the digital dollar report. Created due to popular demand, this report is packed with important digital dollar insights. Best of all, it shares a strategy smart investors have used to hedge against economic uncertainties like the digital dollar. Act now to learn more with Augusta Precious Metals. Do it for your financial future. Receive the free downside of the digital dollar report today by texting LEVIN to 68592. That's L-E-V-I-N to 68592. Again, text LEVIN to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text aid and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. (laughs) 
So I want you to understand who these people are who keep bringing up civilian casualties in Gaza. They know what Hamas is doing. They know the Israelis are doing everything humanly possible to avoid civilian casualties. They know that the Israelis fight like real soldiers. That the Israelis have morality. That they respect women. They respect children and babies. They don't target them. They're not moving through Gaza like Genghis Khan or Palestinian terrorists raping and marauding as they go along. Tell me, where are all the stories of a Palestinian teenager being raped by 10 Israelis and then shot in the head? I posted these things early in the morning. If you really want to know what I'm thinking, that's the best time to go online early in the morning. In addition to the other several posts and one that I mentioned to you, I posted this. Whatever you do, Israel, do not harm a hair on the head of anyone who voted Hamas into power. Even if you're not targeting them, and Hamas is intentionally using them. As you seek to destroy the Hamas barbarians who targeted, raped, and brutalized your little girls on October 7th. Because, as it is now beyond obvious, to CNN and MSNBC, to George Stephanopoulos and ABC, to NBC, which is a grotesque propaganda operation. It is now beyond obvious to Brzezinski and Scarborough and all the rest of them that a Jewish life, especially a Jewish girl's life, does not mean as much as any other life of any other people on the face of the earth, especially Palestinians. That's the implication, if not outright belief, of the Biden regime. The American media, American colleges, scores of Democrat members of Congress, and the pro-Hamas dirtbags in our streets. There's no other way to conclude what their mindset is here. A Jewish life, especially the life of a little Jewish girl or a teenager. Is not as important. Is not as blessed by God. It's the lives of those who vote Hamas into power. As the citizens who overwhelmingly support Hamas, even after October 7th. And who are racists. That's what the survey by the Arab organization found. That's why you're not hearing about any of it except from me. Nobody has any guts to say it. And in the media, the American media, they're so damn corrupt. It's like the Hunter Biden laptop. At a crucial time when we needed to know about it, they covered it up. And so they cover up the survey slash poll. Just understand, ladies and gentlemen, when you hear somebody on TV or radio say, or somebody in print write, What about the civilians in Gaza? You know that they have little care for the lives of the Jews. They didn't care before. They didn't care on October 7th, and they don't care today. This isn't the first time Hamas has attacked Israel. It's just their most, quote-unquote, successful act of genocide and atrocities. And I want you to listen. Think I'm fooling you? I want you to listen to the person who runs the progressive entity, whatever they call themselves, in the House of Representatives, meaning Marxists. Pramila Jayapal on CNN yesterday. And before I get to her, where's Michelle Obama? People have asked the question. I'm asking the question. Remember the Me Too movement? Remember the little girls that were taken hostage in Nigeria? Another horrendous Islamo-Nazi 
terrorist organization? Oh, they just want another state. No, they don't want another state. They want everything. Remember she held up that poster? Hashtag me too. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's been about two months now. She hasn't said a damn thing. She hasn't held up her poster. The leader of the Me Too movement has said nothing. Not a word. Nothing. She's grotesque. She's been nothing but hype. Her phony books. Her barely coherent statements. She's a complete fabrication. And she stands, although you don't even see it that often, with that Marxist dummy of a husband of hers. Obama, the the anti-Semite. And he proves it repeatedly. And so do the people that work for him and now work for Biden. Here is Pramelia Jayapal of Seattle. On CNN yesterday, cut one, go. You said it worked. Yes, there were hostages who were released, but it wasn't even an actual uh, hard ceasefire. They were just trying to get another day and Hamas wouldn't comply. So what makes you think that Hamas would comply with a longer term ceasefire? Well, I think this is all about negotiation. Qatar has been incredibly helpful here. It's not clear to me from the reporting um, who was to blame for uh, you don't for believe the, the U.S. the Biden administration that Hamas? Well, I just think it's very complicated. Young women. I think it's very, very complicated. Um, it's it's no, not. No, you a-hole. It's not complicated at all. You are a POS. You really are. You really, really are. You have no empathy or compassion. You are a cold blooded. Ice water in the veins. Hardcore extreme Marxist. That's what you are. That's what you are. You don't give a damn about these Israeli Jewish teenagers. You don't give a damn about the mass rapes going on. Why don't you admit it? I mean, you all but did. You praise Qatar, which funds Hamas. You praise Qatar, which gives safe haven to the leaders of Hamas. Just understand, America, what we're dealing with here. Jayapal, Talib, Omar, and several score of Democrats in the House of Representatives, some in the Senate like Bernie Sanders, they don't give a crap about these Jews. They immediately try to exploit this situation. There, the Israelis are killing the poor Palestinian citizens who have nothing to do with this. They don't even agree with Hamas. And they embrace Hamas's statistics. They embrace Hamas's video. They embrace Hamas's propaganda. The Israelis are killing wantonly, willingly. And we all know that if the Israelis wanted to level, nobody ever talks about this. They don't, but if they wanted to level the Gaza Strip, they could level it in about 30 minutes. Tell me, what would Hamas do with an atomic weapon, Mr. Perdue? I'm asking America, what what would what Iran, the Islamo-Nazi regime, what do you think they would do with a nuclear weapon over there and the Biden administration is doing nothing to stop them? The Israelis have nuclear weapons. It's not a great secret. They don't admit to it, but they're not using them. They're not even threatening to use them. Like Putin threatens to use them all the time. Hey, that Putin, he keeps threatening. We better get the hell out of there. I mean, he's good. Israel doesn't do that. It's complicated for Jayapal because she has no soul. She has no moral core. She's a Marxist pig. Oh, did he call her Marxist? But yeah, I did. Anybody who cannot condemn what was done on October 7th without excuses, without hyphenations, 
is a pig. I don't care who they are. I don't care what their job is. Oh, it gets worse. Hat tip right scoop, by the way. Cut to go. I want to ask you about uh, sexual violence. And the, it's kind of remarkable. You know, let's that save this. I don't want to rush this. Um, and I don't have enough time to play this in full, which I'm going to. until after the break. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Mark Levin here, folks, with essential information about a possible digital dollar and its impact on IRAs and 401ks. Educate yourself before a digital dollar comes with Augusta Precious Metals' downside of the digital dollar report. Created due to popular demand, this report is packed with important digital dollar insights. Best of all, it shares a strategy smart investors have used to hedge against economic uncertainties like the digital dollar. Act now to learn more with Augusta Precious Metals. Do it for your financial future. Receive the free downside of the digital dollar report today by texting LEVIN to 68592. That's L-E-V-I-N to 68592. Again, text LEVIN to 68592 or go to AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Text aid and message rates may apply. Performance varies. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. As an aside, folks, there was a piece in the Wall Street Journal by Jason Greenblatt, Michael Oram, um, which was stunning to me in its obtuseness. trying to argue for a two-state solution and along the lines that Trump supported, and yet they leave out very, very crucial pieces of information that David Freeman has included in a recent post. Um, the plan was an immediate Israeli sovereignty over half of what's called Area C. And, of course, that's not what's being proposed here. You know, the area A, B, C, not to get too confused on this Oslo nonsense. Uh, so the facts are misstated in the piece. And uh, the proposal for a two-state solution at this point is, as I've said over and over again, a final solution for Israel. I just read to you the survey and the poll of the Palestinians in the so-called West Bank, and that's where they would create this nation and then have some kind of a connection, contiguous, contiguous connection with the Gaza Strip. Now, how insane is that? I told you the poll. We know what's going on. You know, it's it's just, it's, it's I don't know if it's people just wanting to, uh, I, I don't know, and I'm not going to even cast aspersions on it. I just think it is a, it is a dangerous nonsense. Let me put it to you that way. And why the Wall Street Journal thought it was worthy of uh, their pages, I don't know. Just more of the same nonsense. Uh, But a hat tip to David Freeman, because he's right. Uh, And Orm. Orm is sort of a... I had him on the show once or twice because he wanted to talk about a fiction, a novel that he wrote. But he's he's kind of uh, flighty, if you ask me. Bounces back and forth. It's just he's just not the uh, the North Star that you look to. And uh, Jason is a very very nice guy, uh, but I am really stunned by this and his earlier comments to me about how great a job Biden is doing during the first ten days. I said no 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 no. Jeez, if I have to explain it to these guys, how much time do we have here, Rich? Three. All right, let's get started. Cut to go. I want to ask you about uh, sexual violence. And the, it's kind of remarkable that this issue hasn't gotten enough attention uh, globally. Widespread use of rape, uh, brutal rape, sexual violence against Israeli women by Hamas. Um, I've seen a lot of progressive women, generally speaking, they're quick to defend women's rights and speak out against using rape as a, as a weapon of war, but downright silent on 
what we saw on October And notice they never mentioned their hero, Michelle Obama, not once. Go ahead. Inside Gaza right now to these hostages. Why is that? I, I mean, I don't, I don't know that that's true. I think we always talk about the impact of war on women in particular. In fact, I remember 20 years ago I did a petition around the war in Iraq. Have you said, saying have that, you talked about it since oh, October absolutely. 7th? And I've condemned what Hamas has done. I've condemned Specifically all of women. the actions. Absolutely. The, the rape, the, of course. But I think we have to remember that Israel is a democracy. That is why they are a strong ally of ours. And if they do not comply with international humanitarian law, they are bringing themselves to a place that makes it much more difficult strategically for them yeah. to be able to build the kinds of allies to keep public opinion. Notice with how she's so full of crap. The hot air is coming out of every orifice that she has. She was asked a simple question and she won't answer. She sounds like this guy uh, Newsom. Go ahead. Uh, morally, I think we cannot say that one war crime deserves another. That is. Oh, not- OK. Got that? It's the moral equivalency I keep telling you about. So Hamas slaughters its own people and slaughters the Israeli people and want to slaughter Americans, too, by the way, and have. And uh, the Palestinians, by 85 percent and more, depending on what aspect of the question you ask, support what Hamas did. And Jews are not marauding around Gaza, raping their teenage girls, gang raping them, decapitating them, humiliating them, and all the rest of it. But for Pramala Jayapal, Israel's existence is a war crime. Israel's defense of itself is a war crime. Israel trying to take out these terrorists that have been trying to destroy as many Israelis as possible for decades... That's a war crime. The existence of the Jews is a war crime. Go ahead. What humanitarian law says. Okay, with with respect, I was just asking about the the women, and you turned it back to Israel. I'm asking you about Hamas, in fact. I already answered your question, Dana. I I said it's horrific, and I think that rape is horrific, sexual assault is horrific. I think that it happens in war situations. She says, but you don't see. Israeli soldiers raping Palestinian women. Well, Dana, I think we're not, we're not, I don't want this to be the hierarchy of oppressions. I think 15,000 people have been killed. You see, she's a Hamas mouthpiece. She's a pig. I said, anybody who defends this or won't condemn it is a pig. She is a pig. I'll be right back. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877 877-381-381. 3811, you watch how Media Matters, perhaps Mediaite and others, come to the defense of Jayapal for the disgusting things that she said, the moral equivalency. You're talking about Nazi atrocities committed against Jewish teenage girls. Not only won't she confront them, she starts rolling out moral equivalency with the Israeli soldiers. You watch how the Democrat media, I should say they're surrogates, like Media Matters, the media I come to their defense. This woman has no moral core whatsoever. She's a leader of the Marxist wing of the Democrat Party. All this talk about Me Too movement, it's sickening. 
It's unbelievable. And uh, we mustn't hide from it. We must call her out. We must call her exactly what she is, a horrendous anti-Semite. As is Talib, as is Omar, as is AOC, as are most of the radical leftists in the Democrat Party, the Hamas wing of the Democrat Party. And when you hear people come to this kind of moral equivalency conclusion, you know what they are and who they are. You know, I've told you many times, I smell the 1930s in the air. Victor Davis Hanson has a great piece at American Greatness on this very subject, but I smell the whiff of the 1930s. The extent, the extent of this bigotry is truly amazing, is it not? It's in every corner of our culture. It's pushed by the elites, so-called. It's embraced by half the ruling class. It's embraced fully by the Democrat Party that pretends that it's not. Even when Schumer condemns his own fellow travelers, as he calls them. He doesn't start to name names. He doesn't condemn the Biden administration for Blinken and all the rest. Nah. No. It's really quite amazing. You got George Soros. We talked about this. Who's defended by the media, defended by the Democrat Party, and why wouldn't he be? He owns them. The man is worth $30, $40 billion, and he's turning every red cent, and I mean red cent, toward this revolution to overthrow America and to destroy the state of Israel. And I heard another reporter say today, or was it yesterday, whenever it was, and he's Jewish. Oh, okay. Okay, that explains it then, right? And he's funding all these pro-Hamas-linked groups, as the New York Post wrote and investigated. Nobody condemns him in the Democrat Party. Nobody's going to condemn him in the Democrat Party. And so, Jayapal makes these truly disgusting statements. Her party won't hold her to account. In fact, Jean-Pierre at the White House press briefing today won't even condemn her. So the message has gone on out far and wide among Democrats. Do not condemn our dear friend, Jayapal. We need her. We need the crazy-ass followers that she has, the Hamas wing of the Democrat Party, if we're going to get Biden elected. And by the way, Paul Ryan, I'm going to get to you, too. Paul Ryan, Mitt Romney, that whole wing of the Republican Party, such as it is, elitists, Washington-centric, they're going to get Joe Biden elected. The Democrat Party doesn't conduct itself this way. The self-righteous buffoons of the Republican Party, of course, do. But here she is, Jean-Pierre. Cut three, go. Can I get the White House's response to uh, Congresswoman Jayapal's comments over the weekend uh, in her interview? She said sexual violence should be condemned, but that we have to be balanced in our condemnation. Was that an appropriate comment? Look, so we've been very, very clear. Uh, you heard a little bit from... from no, actually, you haven't been very clear. You say, oh, what happened on October 7th is horrific and so forth and so on. And then you do everything you can to stab Israel in the back, to prevent it from winning, and thereby to stop it from, to stop anything like this from happening again. You're the guys who fund terrorists. You fund Hamas or UNRWA. You fund the Islamo-Nazi regime in Tehran. 
which pushes money out to Hamas and Hezbollah and the Houthis and everybody else who wants to decapitate people they don't agree with. I mean, these people sanctimoniously stand behind these podiums like they have no responsibility for any of this. Go ahead. Um, I can only speak for for the president. Uh, That's who I can speak for. Yeah, because he can't speak for himself. That's for sure. Go ahead. What uh, Hamas did is absolutely reprehensible and full stop. We're going to continue to be clear about that. It's not what you were asked. You were asked about one of the leading Marxists in the House of Representatives, member of the Democrat Party. You were asked if you would condemn her for what appears to be, what appears to be to me, her lack in any respect, her lack of concern or upset or any of the rest of it about the the Jewish girls who were raped and brutalized. Oh, no, 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 but this is war, you know. Everybody does it. No, everybody doesn't do it, you jerk. Go ahead. You know, rape and the use of rape as being used as a, as a weapon, uh, that is also reprehensible. No, and it's also a war crime. So the Palestinians committed war crimes. It's Hamas. Mar- they are Palestinians. They committed war crimes. One after another after another. Go ahead. I'll just leave it there. And I'm speaking for the president of the United States. I think I've been very clear on that. Any comment, though, I I just Congresswoman Jayapal. I just commented on it. I just laid out. See, ladies and gentlemen, Jayapal will not condemn without creating a moral equivalency and all the rest. Well, you know, it's war. The horrendous, atrocious acts against these girls. Because she hates Israel and hates the Jews. There's no other explanation for it. And now the Biden administration's top spokes idiot will not condemn her. Because you see, ladies and gentlemen, for them it's all about keeping their Hamas Democrats in order so they can get their votes. Oh, it gets even worse. Kamala Harris, the idiot vice president. You have to wonder, America, what happened to this country where Joe Biden's president, Kamala Harris, is vice president? How the hell did this happen? Well, we know, don't we? But don't worry, Paul Ryan says, defeat Trump at all costs. Can you believe we all used to support these people? Romney, Paul Ryan. They're contemptible. Contemptible. But here's Kamala Harris in Dubai, United Arab Emirates which has diplomatic ties with Israel, was the first in the Abraham Accords to make those ties. Cut four, go. In the first day after this temporary truce had had ended, um, Israel killed 200 Palestinians, uh, according to the Gaza Health Ministry. Oh, Uh, it's not the Gaza Health Ministry. It's the Hamas Health Ministry. Oh, really? Well, according to the Mark Health uh, uh, Health, uh, Ministry... They got the uh, Hamas has killed five million people, Mr. Producer. What do you think of that? Go ahead. Minimizing harm to civilian life. Is that acceptable? I don't have the details to tell you exactly who now, was the answer killed should be. Those figures are bogus. They come from a terrorist regime. How do we know they didn't kill 200 people? How do we know some of those 200 people aren't? You know, part of the terrorists who attacked Israel. No questions. No demand for specificity. No, I don't know if that's but, but, go ahead. Say this. We have been very clear about where we stand on this, which is innocent civilian lives should not be intentionally targeted and that Israel must... So let's stop there. That's enough. They should not be intentionally targeted. By whom? Israel? So now we have the vice president... So here we heard Jayapal. Then we heard the spokes idiot. Now we have the other idiot. They call her vice president. And she says Israel shouldn't target, quote, intentionally targeted 
civilians. I'm telling you, it's it's just it's just incredible. It's just incredible. Israel shouldn't be intentionally targeting civilians. You know, the moderate Palestinians who want peace in our time. No, no, no. Who support Hamas to this day, 80%, over 80%. And who voted them into office, of course. I think it was almost 90%, actually. No, no, no. You don't understand, Mark. Jayapal and the idiot spokes idiot and Kamala Harris. Then, of course, we have Blinken. Sullivan, they've made clear their positions years ago under Obama and before they even joined the Biden administration. It's the Jews. They just won't do what we tell them to do. They used to. We need a government in Israel. A government where the Jews do what we tell them to do. We want you to create a state for the Palestinians. Yes, sir. We want you to give food and medicine and technology and everything. Yes, sir. Don't don't harm a hair on any Palestinian's head, regardless of what they did to you, as as what Hamas did to you, regardless of your desire to defend. Yes, sir. Whatever you say, sir. Let me reiterate, every death, every casualty, every rape, every act of brutality, however defined, is on Hamas. They did it. They did it. How many stories have you read of these Palestinians in the Gaza Strip forming a little militia, maybe 20, 30, 50 men going out and trying to take out the leaders of Hamas, assassinate them, take them out, whatever's necessary. Have you read any stories like that, Mr. Producer? Neither have I. Why is that? I mean, even when the Nazis came to power, some Germans attempted to do that. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Pure Talk has you covered for the holidays with a free Moto G5G phone. No gimmicks, no trading necessary. Just sign up for Pure Talk's unlimited talk, unlimited text, 15 gig data plan, just 35 bucks, and get the Moto G5G phone free. But here's the deal. You need to move fast because these phones are almost gone. So if your current phone is on life support, upgrade for free with Pure Talk. Enjoy two-day battery life, an exceptional quad pixel camera, and a whole lot more. Just Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, to get this exclusive offer and to select the plan that's right for your family. Remember, Pure Talk gives you America's most dependable 5G network at half the price. So make the switch today. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin, that's slash L-E-V-I-N, to claim your free Moto G 5G phone with qualifying plan. Again, puretalk.com slash Levin, Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. Oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen. Now, what about those figures that Hamas keep putting out? And why do the media keep using them? Why do the media keep using those Hamas figures? They're bogus. They're almost as bogus as Biden's border figures. Um, which is, of course, problematic. Now, let me see here for a second. Just bear with me, America. I want to pull something up and uh, share it with you because this will give some uh, some further evidence of what I'm speaking. Well, I don't have it right now, but there is an analysis that's done, again, by this uh, Jerusalem think tank of past attacks against Israel by Hamas. 
and they look with great detail and substance at the past allegations, information put out, regurgitated by our media, CNN, MSNBC, and the other reprobates, about casualties to Palestinians, and they demonstrate how they were lies. How they were lies then, and they're lies now. So why, they ask, why would the American media, why would the American media continue to use an organization that is a terrorist organization, that has been known to lie in the past and is lying now, in order to get the, in order to uh, promote this, and the answer is simple, because many in the media are anti-Semites. Anti-Semites means anti-Jew. If they're not pro, are they? They're also anti-American, by the way. I don't think there's any question about that. But that's the situation. So they use that information, and they keep using that information. And the Democrat Party uses that information. Jayapal uses that information. So why do they use it? They have more contempt for MAGA, Donald Trump, the Republican base, than they do for the enemy of humanity. Think about that. Because it's true. I'll be right back. Pure Talk has you covered for the holidays with a free Moto G5G phone. No gimmicks, no trade-in necessary. Just sign up for Pure Talk's unlimited talk, unlimited text, 15 gig data plan, just 35 bucks, and get the Moto G5G phone free. But here's the deal. You need to move fast because these phones are almost gone. So if your current phone is on life support, upgrade for free with Pure Talk. Enjoy two-day battery life, an exceptional quad pixel camera, and a whole lot more. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, to get this exclusive offer and to select the plan that's right for your family. Remember, Pure Talk gives you America's most dependable 5G network at half the price. So make the switch today. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin, that's slash L-E-V-I-N, to claim your free Moto G 5G phone with qualifying plan. Again, puretalk.com slash Levin, Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. This show goes so damn fast, it's half over, so I got I to gotta keep my uh, foot on the pedal here. I want to read something to you. We have a lot of corporations in this country run by these woke corporatists who do grave damage to our country, our culture, and our national security. But when a company does something that is beautiful, and I learn about it, I want to acknowledge it. USA Today, Emily Koblenz. Tears streaming down my face, quote-unquote, new Chevy commercial hits home with Americans. An emotional holiday commercial from Chevy is hitting home with many Americans and could well become one of those ads we'll never forget. The automaker's more than five-minute ad called A Holiday to Remember opens with a family gathering. Man and his daughter are talking about the declining well-being of his wife, who has early stage Alzheimer's. Quote, there's some days she doesn't even recognize me, he says, answering his daughter's question about whether her mom has more bad days than good. A young woman, presumably the older couple's granddaughter, overhears the conversation and makes a decision. She tells her grandmother, who sits with a vacant look, let's make today a good day, before carefully leading her to a blue 1972 Chevrolet Suburban in the garage. As John Denver's Sunshine on My Shoulders plays, the young woman drives her grandmother through town, reminding her of pivotal places in her life, like her childhood home or high school, 
drive-in theater that triggers a memory. It was there the now elderly woman's husband first kissed his wife-to-be, the granddaughter says. Her grandmother then corrects her, no, I kissed him. He was far too shy. She then tells her teary-eyed granddaughter, Bill, I need to see Bill. The pair return to the family home where the longtime couple hold each other and kiss with tears streaming down their faces. He has her. For a moment. The ad was created with help from the Alzheimer's Association because most importantly, the commercial showcases what people living with Alzheimer's and their families go through. Especially around the holidays. An estimated 6.7 million Americans ages 65 and older are living with Alzheimer's in 2023, according to the association. We talked a lot about reminiscence therapy. Not that it's a cure or a solve. But the power of music, the power of memories are things that can enable the person going through it to feel more comfortable. The people that are the caregivers that are surrounding them will also feel more comfortable, said Steve Majoros, Chevrolet's head of marketing. He told Ad Age magazine. General Motors will not do Super Bowl commercials in 2024, he said. We're not going to spend a trillion dollars in media. Focusing on the holidays is a way to appeal to consumers with warm, emotive stories. The commercial was first shown during Fox's Thanksgiving Day NFL broadcast. The ad is still making its rounds on all social media platforms. And will likely continue throughout the holiday season. Internet users are opening up about how the ad is making them feel. YouTube user Kathy Owen observed that the best marketing tells a story. Thank you, Chevy, for the tears of joy, she said. Ex-user Linda Traits commented how the ad left its mark on her. Tears are streaming down my face, she wrote. I was smiling and crying at the same time. Automotive News wrote in its reaction to the ad that the holidays can be a difficult time for family members of loved ones with dementia and Alzheimer's disease. But Chevy's new ad portrays how the season can also spark moments of joy, however fleeting. Ex-user Mandy Lynn crowned the ad as the commercial of the season. Deacon Greg Kay took it further by saying the commercial's impact could last for much longer. It'd certainly be hard to beat, he said. Majoras told USA Today that it's about more than just selling vehicles. We feel a sense of honor and responsibility when given the opportunity to bring these stories to life each holiday season. Let's go to a commercial. Mark Lovin. Pure Talk has you covered for the holidays with a free Moto G5G phone. No gimmicks, no trading necessary. Just sign up for Pure Talk's unlimited talk, unlimited text, 15 gig data plan, just 35 bucks, and get the Moto G5G phone free. But here's the deal. You need to move fast because these phones are almost gone. So if your current phone is on life support, upgrade for free with Pure Talk. Enjoy two-day battery life, an exceptional quad pixel camera, and a whole lot more. Just Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, to get this exclusive offer and to select the plan that's right for your family. Remember, Pure Talk gives you America's most dependable 5G network at half the price. So make the switch today. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin, that's slash L-E-V-I-N, to claim your free Moto G 5G phone with qualifying plan. Again, puretalk.com slash Levin, Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. Well, I'm sorry about that, folks. I've kept the secret from you for how long now? 
seven or eight years. Um, this strikes home with us. My older brother has uh, Alzheimer's. Get it at a fairly young age. It's very difficult, especially for his children. I'm not going to discuss it anymore. I don't have the right to discuss it anymore. But it is, uh, as people out there know, a horrendous disease. Horrendous. But I'm not going to get into it anymore because I don't feel I have the the right to speak for somebody who cannot speak for himself. But I do want people out there to know, particularly this time of year, who have to deal with this, I know what you're going through. And you're God's angels, trust me. And that's that. Enough of that. You know, uh, we're going to get back to politics here. I listened to Paul Ryan today come out and say that so many words he backs Nikki Haley, but he's not formally backing her. Because there's no way he can support Trump. You know, ladies and gentlemen, we are grievously abused, we conservatives, in the Republican Party by the Republican establishment and the ruling class. We are grievously abused. They lie to us, so we vote for them. They never deliver, ever. During my lifetime, the one president who delivered was Reagan because he wasn't one of the group. He wasn't a Washington ruling class elitist man. He was a remarkable man, a statesman, a leader. And he did tremendous things. And he was opposed strongly by this Republican ruling class, despite what they say today. And these self-appointed elites, they're not elites, but they think they're elites. Paul Ryan's endorsement or lack of endorsement won't affect anybody but Paul Ryan. Nobody gives a damn about Paul Ryan or what he chooses to do. But to me, it's just another example of people who have betrayed us and deceived us. We backed all these years Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney and his family have now betrayed us. They've turned on us. All these years we backed the Bushes. Bush's main mouthpiece is Karl Rove, and he's out there trashing away. Sununu, who was on George H.W. Bush's staff as his chief of staff, brought us one of the worst Supreme Court justices in modern history. His son gets elected to governor. He had a son who'd been in the Senate as well. He betrays us. They're all self-righteous. They all tell us how they're going to save the world and save America, and the only way we can win is to support somebody like them. Mitt Romney, probably the most repulsive of all the examples, lied through his teeth. And now he's fed it by the media, praised by the media as a truth teller. Anybody who has no character whatsoever, who lies to the conservative base, who accomplishes almost nothing that means anything in terms of our mission, saving the nation, they are praised by the people who are trying to destroy the country, that is, the media and their ilk. Notice Paul Ryan didn't support 
or say you'd support Ron DeSantis. You need to understand why. They don't support conservatives. They hate Trump, who is a common-sense conservative. He didn't come to it by way of college. or He didn't come to it by way of philosophy. He didn't come to it by... He came to it by way of common sense, like so many Americans do. He loves his country. He's a red-blooded American. He's demonstrated that constantly. But they hate him. Because he may have looked at them funny. He may have tweeted something funny. He may have said something to them. They hate him. Because in their own social circles, the Republican circles, the way he speaks or acts is off-putting. But look at the great things he did for this country. I can name them all. And we'd be here a long time. Look at the great things he did for our allies. NATO, he forced ally, excuse me, forced NATO to fund itself. But then they said he was going to take us out of NATO. No, he didn't. He made the Middle East safer than it's ever been, particularly for Israel, particularly for the so-called moderate, moderate Arab states. He secured the border like no president since Dwight Eisenhower. And was fought every step of the way, called a racist. He's not a racist. Joe Biden's a racist. It's not an anti-Semite. Barack Obama's an anti-Semite. He's none of those things. And he exercised power for those four years, strictly within the bounds of the Constitution. Strictly within the bounds of the Constitution. Even more, he named people to the courts, not just the Supreme Court, the circuit courts and the federal district courts, whom he believed would enforce, comply with the Constitution of the United States. Not like the Obama, Biden, Clinton appointees who spend their lives trying to uproot and turn inside out the Constitution. Here's a guy that was appointing originalists. So he's appointing originalists. He complied with the Constitution. He loves his country, he loves the founders, and yet he's going to be a dictator. Joe Biden signing executive orders, destroying women's sports, destroying our classrooms, destroying our borders, refusing to comply with our immigration laws, which is an impeachable offense. I would tell the speaker, Mr. Comer, What is it with Comer, by the way, Mr. Producer? James Comer's been invited on this show. I stopped inviting him. He appears to be a good guy. He's running a good committee. I don't know what's with these guys. I stopped asking him to come on Fox. He goes on the same two or three programs every day. That's fine. Go on any program he wants. But I don't need him to make the case for impeachment because the strongest case for impeachment, even though financial is very important, is Biden's violation of the Constitution. That's the high crime. I watched NBC by accident for 10 minutes this morning. What a disgusting operation that is. And they Biden has not They haven't shown that Biden has done anything wrong. No, he's violating our immigration laws. That's an impeachable offense. He's giving money. For student loans to people who haven't paid off their loans, that's an impeachable offense. He doesn't have that authority. But, of course, we're dealing with NBC. Nobody but stupid. It ought to be NBS. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. Ladies and gentlemen. I told you a few weeks ago, maybe more, 
that unfortunately many of these hostages are not going to come back because they've been murdered. I also mentioned that I had no doubt that many of these hostages had been abused. These are barbarians. These are monsters. And I don't want to hear any more about, not from me, not on this show, civilians in Gaza. Now, Matt Miller at the State Department, he's a spokesman for the State Department. I want you to hear what he had to say today. Where are these women hostages who were supposed to be released? Where are they? Well, it's what I feared. Cut 23, go. When you look at all the atrocities that Hamas uh, carried out on October 7th and the atrocities that they have carried uh, out since, the fact that they continue to hold women hostages, the fact that they continue to hold children hostages, the fact that it seems one of the reasons they don't want to turn women over that they've been holding hostage and the reason this pause fell apart is they don't want those women to be able to talk about what happened to them during their time in custody. Um, Certainly, there is very uh, little that I would put beyond Hamas when it comes to its treatment of civilians and particularly its treatment uh, of women. A, uh, an official with the Israeli government said, uh, where's Michelle Obama on this? And he also said he's reached out to her, they have, multiple times and she ignores them. Remember when Barack Obama waited to put out a statement after the monstrous atrocities on October 7th? And he put out a very strange statement. And then remember when he put out another statement that caused many of us to puke figuratively, including Alan Dershowitz when he gave the Hamas line about occupied territory? And now Michelle Obama doesn't speak out? And people say, you know, Michelle Obama, she could be the real Democrat presidential candidate. Really? Notice how the media say almost nothing about Michelle Obama. Where's the hashtag me too? Ladies and gentlemen, I've been telling you, I posted to this effect. I spoke in the first hour to this. To many people, particularly the Marxists, who have a home, a very comfortable home in the Democrat Party and in the media, Jewish lives don't matter. Oh, they'll say, what happened on October 7th, like uh, Jayapal, what happened was horrendous. I already spoke out against that. You know, I, I did my part. I put the little preface in there, and now I can say anything I want about Israel and the Jews and Netanyahu and all the rest. Liberal Democrats, even some of whom are, are Jewish, do exactly the same thing. What I call self-hating Jews. And I've explained that in tremendous detail. Uh, Jews who view themselves as both uh, an ethnicity and people of faith, and others who just view themselves as an ethnicity and have absolutely nothing in common with with, uh, Jews of faith, like Orthodox Jews. But I'm not going to get into that for the 50th time. So now we have the United States State Department that doesn't believe it, knows that the young women, the teenage girls, maybe even younger, are not being released because they've been savagely and repeatedly raped and many of them have been murdered. And Jayapal cannot bring herself to condemn them unequivocally. And on every damn Sunday show, they're talking about Palestinian civilians in Gaza. What are the Israelis going to do to limit casualties? All right, I'll give you a list. Number one, they're not going to rape them. Number two, they're not going to behead them. Number three, they're not going to burn them alive. Number four, they're not going to butcher them. Number five, they're not going to target them. 
Number six, they're going to try to avoid them. That's what they're trying to do. At the cost of their own IDF soldiers, who are many of whom are dying as a result of sniper fire. Now, I need an answer from the media, from the Sunday show hosts. Are you going to show that survey that was done, the poll that was done, by an Arab organization on how the overwhelming majority of Palestinians support what happened on October 7th? That the overwhelming majority, and I mean 80% or more, support Hamas and what they did on October 7th? Are you going to report that they want the obliteration of the Jews? Are you going to report, based again on this Arab survey, how racist the population is as a whole? Are you going to report any of this? Are you going to show the graphs? Are you going to explain it to the American people? I mean, pretend it's a political thing. You know how you folks in the media are. Look at this percentage, this percentage, this per- Okay, show us. Show the nation. Stop lying. Show Americans what we're confronting. But you see, then the whole, the dominoes begin to fall. If this is the case, why aren't we importing people from that part of the world? Why are we giving student visas from that part of the world? Oh, you must be a racist. We Americans are not racists. We Americans send our children, our young men and women overseas, to protect every faith, every ethnicity, every form, color of human being on the face of the earth. We're not buying into this racist crap. The Islamophobia crap. Oh, there are places where Muslims are targeted and murdered. It's called the Middle East. It's called by other Muslims. It's called communist China. We just want a competition with them. As Biden and Newsom slobbers all over him. G. Jake Sullivan at the White House press briefing today. You know, they, we want to cease fire, they keep saying. We want to cease fire. We want to cease fire, say, say the anti-Semi pro-Hamas wing of the Democrat Party. Say the Biden administration of Biden over and over. We want a longer ceasefire, longer ceasefire. What does that mean, ceasefire? It means the Israelis surrender, and the enemy does whatever the hell it wants to, with hostages, with women, with babies. How many holocausts do these people have to go through, the Jews? How many? Here's Sullivan. Cut 24, go. Right now, Hamas is refusing to release civilian women who should have been part of the agreement. And it is that refusal by Hamas that has caused uh, the end of the hostage agreement and therefore the end of the pause in hostilities. So here's my question to you, fake Jake. Here's my question to you. Donald Trump cut off all monies to UNRWA, the phony refugee UN organization that funnels money to Hamas. The UN does not call Hamas a terrorist organization, so it keeps funneling our tax dollars to them. Trump cut it off. If this is what these people are doing to young girls and women and God knows what, then why do you continue to flow money toward them, for them? Why do you do that? You see, the Biden administration doesn't take any responsibility for the mass murder, for the rape, for the mayhem that occurred on its watch because of all the monies they gave to Iran, first and foremost. They blew up the Middle East by funding our enemy. The enemy of a free people everywhere, the enemy of Israel. They gave their money to Hamas, they gave their money to Hezbollah, to the Houthis, and everybody else. This administration takes no responsibility, and the media do not hold this administration to account. How can you expect Jen Psaki to do that when she was part of this administration when it was all taking place? And Simone, what's her face? Another one. Can't remember her name. Same thing. And Jake Tapper, he used to write for Salon, a really radical left-wing operation, 
who was the campaign spokes idiot for Marjorie Margolis when she ran for the House in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, where I'm from, who worked for Handgun Inc. How do you expect him to call the shot straight? But he gets award after award after award by the media, as you would expect. As you would expect. They're not releasing the women because they're either dead or they've been brutalized and they will kill them so they never are able to speak about what took place. Now this savagery has occurred on our watch, our generation's watch. It's happened on the watch of this administration. And they blame the victim. You know, we have these rape cases in, in the United States. We've changed our laws so the victim cannot be blamed for the perpetrator's actions against her. That's exactly what this administration and the media are doing. They're blaming the victim for defending itself. They're blaming the victim for trying to kill the enemy. That raped and maimed its little girls, slaughtered its babies, executed its fathers and grandfathers. They're blaming the victim. While the enemy's killing its own people directly and indirectly, they're blaming the victim. In fact, they're even using the terrorist perpetrators' figures in order to blame the victim. They're using the numbers concocted by the terrorists. To blame the victim. The American media. And these are the people who hate your guts, by the way. Hate Trump. Hate DeSantis. Let me circle back to this point. Paul Ryan could have said something nice about DeSantis, but he didn't. And he trashes Trump. Because he's not a conservative. No, he's a corporatist. I just want to put this marker out here. If we don't win the White House, you can blame these Republicans and you can blame Biden and the Department of Justice for trying to convict Donald Trump of some phony felony in order to handicap him with independence, you know. No labels. Nobody can tell me three, four, five significant things Nikki Haley did as governor. Nobody. Paul Ryan can't either. Now he'll go check, but he couldn't before. Rove couldn't either. Wall Street's all four. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? You can't be for the self-serving, anti-capitalist, pro-big government regulation, international corporatists that benefit from a lack of competition, and Main Street USA at the same time. You just can't. You know, there's a guy here, I may have mentioned it, a guy named Ken Griffin or something. I think I read, I don't know this guy, I don't care to know any of them. Uh, But he's decided now he wants to back Nikki Haley, he thinks, yes, yes. She's She's the one. He doesn't have the foggiest idea why. It doesn't matter. I don't care how much somebody's worth. I don't care what they do with their money. They can use it for toilet paper for all I care. It's not my money. It's none of my business. But I will say this. I think I read somewhere, Mr. Producer. If it's inaccurate, don't blame me. I'm giving you the asterisk and saying, I read it somewhere. That he wants to build a $1 billion home in Palm Beach, Mr. Producer. Did you see that too? Now, you're free to build a $1 billion home. You're free to build a $10 billion home. You're free to do whatever the hell you want to do. But this is how revolutions take place. Again, it's none of my business what the guy does with his money. I don't care if he rolls it up and smokes it like cigars. I don't care what he does. But when people see this sort of thing, when they see this sort of thing, some of them become radicalized. 
I just want to point that out to Mr. Griffin. Apparently he's going to back Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley has had more than two positions on every issue. She's had multiple positions on every issue. As I said, I was very neutral on her until, I believe it was April, when she came to the defense of the indefensible corporatists at Disney that were lying about what was taking place in Florida, because this is my residence now. I was following it very, very closely. Disney Corporation, run by a bunch of leftists out of California, were trying to prevent Florida from doing what Florida needed to do about classrooms and so forth. And so Florida struck back. Nikki Haley comes in and says, we would welcome Disney in South Carolina. That shows you she has absolutely no qualms about doing whatever she thinks will benefit her even if the effect is, in many cases, disastrous. When we have governors who are willing to take on the wokers in our culture, they should be applauded, not undermined. Who exactly is she willing to take on? And so Paul Ryan supports her. I'm not surprised. As well, most of the rhinos, the George Bush crowd, the Gerald Ford crowd, the Nelson Rockefeller crowd, the Scranton crowd, all the people Reagan defeated, even though all these people pretend to be Reaganites all of a sudden. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I kind of have a limited open door policy here. But if any candidates running for the Republican nomination want to come on radio, they're free to come on radio here. We used to reach out to Nikki Haley. I stopped through Mr. Producer. She's non-responsive. We reached out to Chris Christie repeatedly. He's a coward. He will not come on. And so they go on my buddy, and he is my buddy. Hugh Hewitt is an old friend of mine. Good guy. But a rhino. He knows he's a rhino. We all know he's a rhino. And it doesn't mean he's not a good guy, but he's a rhino. So the logs go on his show, you know, a conga line, but they don't want to come on this show. Because I'm going to hand them their hat. Vivek Ramaswamy was on here a couple weeks ago because he asked. Again, I have an open door policy for the other two. Ron DeSantis asked to come on and he'll be on right after the bottom of the hour. It's a pleasure to have Governor Ron DeSantis on the program. Uh, there's five Republicans now running, three of whom will come on the program, and I put them on if they ask, two of whom are avoiding me like the plague, Mr. Governor. That would be uh, your friend Nikki Haley and your friend Chris Christie. They don't want to come on the program, so I stopped asking them. And uh, now we just have candidates who ask to come on because they want to talk to millions of conservatives, patriots who love this guy. Why do you think Nikki Haley in particular, doesn't want to come on this program? Well, because she's not a conservative, Mark. You're a conservative host. You've been a conservative author. You've been a conservative uh, official back in the Reagan administration. You want to see conservative candidates, and you probe candidates appropriately to, to see whether they pass that test or not. And clearly, I'm able to run as a conservative because I've delivered conservative results as governor of Florida, whether it's fiscal conservatism, uh, whether it's fighting back, uh, supporting our kids against Disney, whether it's fighting illegal immigration, banning sanctuary cities, uh, sending illegal aliens to sanctuary jurisdictions like Martha's Vineyard, whether it's taking on things like DEI and ESG. We've done it all. Everything we said we do, uh, we did. There's nobody that could look at our record and conclude anything else, but that this guy is a conservative who, who does what he says, means what he says, and does what he says. Uh, Nikki is not that. Um, she is really a last gasp of a failed Republican establishment from yesteryear. Uh, she does not support a lot of the policies that your listeners support. For example, she's attacked me for standing up for kids and so took the side of Disney. Uh, she has um, most recently said that she thinks 
uh, her first day in office, she's going to make sure everyone has to disclose their names on social media. She says, I want their names. Uh, that would, of course, lead to a digital ID and a social credit system, and it would cause conservatives to be marginalized. So that's a total non-starter. But she believes in that. Uh, she's, uh, of course, weak on the southern border uh, and on and on down the line. Actually, she said immigration policy should not be set by we the people, but should be unlimited based on what corporate CEOs want. So this is not what conservative voters want. And uh, and I think that, that that has been apparent, although in some of these debates, uh, we haven't necessarily seen all of this come to the forefront. Uh, but I think you'll start seeing that in the days and weeks ahead as people start to pay more attention to this race. Incidentally, you always give me a chance to do my website, uh, which is which is rondesantis.com. We hope people go there and support us. But we also have a, a site that we've done called therealnikki.com, uh, and it's uh, uh, therealnikki.com. And it's got the goods, oftentimes in her own words, for positions that she's taken that put her outside of the mainstream, not just of the conservative movement, but of the entire Republican Party. The left-wing media out there, uh, Governor DeSantis, is very upset that my stepson works with you, and every time... You come on or every time I speak, I don't remind them of this like it's any of their damn business who works for who. But there's no secret in any of that. And um, and I'm proud of him and I'm proud of his decisions, quite frankly. And uh, he's a conservative and he's an adult and that he can make that decision. And I do what I want to do. And I'm very proud to give you a platform to speak at because there's a reason people are pouring into Florida, because Florida is not California. You had this fantastic debate. I thought you killed Newsom. He looked quite foolish. Uh, now, obviously, you're going to think you won, too. But how did you feel after the debate? Well, you know, I, I felt good during the debate, but it's interesting, Mark. Uh, Newsom, he, he, one of his criteria for doing it was there be no audience. So literally... In that room, it was Sean, Newsom, and me, and then a couple of the camera guys, and that was it. So uh, I was doing what I, what I needed to do, and, and I felt good about it. But, you know, when you have no reaction at all, sometimes you don't know. And so I went back afterwards, and, and, and my folks were just like, oh, my gosh, this is great. Because I think that our voters want to see somebody that can stand there as a standard bearer for conservative principles and take it to the left and show. And people that watch that debate would come away, if you're a fair-minded observer, saying, you know what, conservative principles work, uh, left-wing policies don't, Florida stood for freedom, California's delivered failure, that's just the facts. And he wasn't able to really wiggle out of the reality of what's happened when he was in California. I mean, the fact that even his in-laws fled California during his administration and moved to Florida and are supporters of mine, that, that's a huge, huge thing that, that something like that is happening. And uh, California, and I, I said at the beginning of the debate, when I was in the, the Navy, I got assigned to uh, Coronado Naval Amphibious Base. Uh, that was training before we deployed to Iraq. I had never spent much time in California. I mean, it is naturally as beautiful a state as there is. They've got all kinds of stuff from beautiful coastline to mountains. They've got desert communities. I mean, you name it. They have everything. It's almost hard to mess California up, and yet he's managed to do it, and it's all because this leftism is toxic. This leftism uh, causes cities to collapse, like San Francisco. It destroys states. It's what Biden and his folks are doing, but I don't think they've been as aggressive as California. They probably would be in a second term, God forbid, or if Harris got elected or Newsom. So really, the, the California is a cautionary tale of what could happen to this entire country, whereas I think Florida represents a pathway to reverse the country's decline and, and get us back to where we need to be. And um, so I thought it was a very useful debate. And if you watch the other Republican debates up to that point, and then you watch uh, the, the Hannity debate that we did with, with Newsom and me, I think most people thought the Hannity debate was much more substantive I was. Than, than the other 100%. Republican debate. And, and these are what we need to have. But, but we need to have, we need to win against the left. And, and so that debate, you know, we won against the left in that debate, which is important because politics is, uh, is about persuasion. You got to do that. But on all these fights, we have beat the left. And I think that the one thing I can say 
is there's not a single Republican in the country uh, who has laid waste to the left to the extent I have. We've beaten the teachers' unions on school choice and on school reopenings. We've beat the Soros prosecutors, removed two of them, and our crime rate's at a 50-year low. Uh, we beat the left on budget and cut taxes and done all this stuff. So on issue after issue, you know, we're winning big victories against the left, and I think that those victories nationwide have been few and far between. And I think a lot of Republicans are just used to Republicans never actually producing really big things. We can do it. We're right on the issues. It showed that. Uh, we just got to have leadership. Governor, are you concerned the Biden administration is undermining the state of Israel, trying to condition support for Israel, trying to make it impossible for the IDF to actually have a victory over Hamas? Because that's my sense of what's going on here. 100%. Uh, you heard what Kamala was saying to, to try to revitalize the Palestinian Authority. Uh, people focus understandably on Hamas and, and, and acknowledge their brutality. And so sometimes they'll, they'll act like the Palestinian Authority is good just because they may not be quite as brutal as Hamas. But the Palestinian Authority, they don't recognize Israel's right to exist as a Jewish state. Uh, they've been involved with terrorism, too. So what they're doing is they're trying to tie Israel's hand behind its back. They're trying to create virtually impossible conditions under which Israel is supposed to operate. And this is not just some random dispute over like a border. This is an existential fight. Israel is going up against a terrorist group that wants a second Holocaust. They want the total destruction of Israel. They do not need to sit there uh, and just deal with and live with that risk. They have every right to eliminate that risk. I think about Florida. If, if someone in the Bahamas was firing rockets into like Fort Lauderdale, we would squash that immediately. We would never allow our people to have to live under that type of, uh, that type mm -hmm. of threat. Uh, and yet Israel is supposed to just kind of grin and bear it. So we need to stand with Israel in public and in private. Uh, let them finish the job. The world will be better off if they win a complete and total victory. And they even in the middle of a war where Israel's trying to defend itself through these horrific atrocities, rapes and the rest. Uh, Blinken, Biden taking a page from Obama. They're pushing a two state solution where they would take the ancient homeland of the Jews, Judea and Samaria. Give it to the Palestinian Authority, which was founded by people need to remember Yasser Arafat which is still killing people. And um, so they want this two-state solution. That's not Hamas. Iran has a country. Aren't they pushing a caliphate? I mean, isn't that the big problem? Give them a two-state solution. That won't stop anything. Mark, when Yasser Arafat founded the PLO, Palestine Liberation Organization, that was prior to the Six-Day War in 1967, meaning... There was no quote unquote occupied territory, uh, even though I don't think that's an appropriate term for what the president is. That was talking about the original Israel 1948 under the partition plan, basically. They were trying to liberate quote unquote uh, Israel and, and basically make it all an Arab state. So, so they were founded for the destruction of Israel. These two state solution ideas. Uh, the Arabs will use that as a stepping stone to destroy Israel. They've never been willing to acknowledge Israel's right to exist as a Jewish state. And you made a good point to point out. These areas that are, are considered occupied by uh, United Nations and this stuff, they're not occupied. They're disputed territory. The Arabs were offered a partition plan in 48. They rejected it, and they went to war, and they lost that war. Then they were ready to attack in 67. Israel preempted it and has similar to what we have now. And then Israel fended off in 73 and all these intifadas. So those lands are the most historic Jewish lands going all the way back to biblical times. It's interesting how Israel will be portrayed as a colonial power. It's like, well, wait a minute. The Jews were there before Islam even existed. So if you're going to talk about uh, colonial, the Jews were the ones that got displaced from that land. They were the original caretakers of the land. So, so much of this is like looking through history with a funhouse mirror, the way it's portrayed politically. Uh, but yes, for 
forcing a two-state solution uh, is a huge mistake. I don't think Israel uh, will indulge that. I mean, they were indulging uh, Clinton in this stuff 20, 25 years ago, uh, but I think they've learned a lot of lessons. I mean, they pulled out of Gaza. I mean, you know this, Mark. They pulled out of Gaza in 2005, and they even uprooted, forcibly uprooted Israeli citizens. They got every Israeli out of there. And the idea was, okay, these Arabs in, in Gaza will have an opportunity to govern themselves and choose a better life. And they chose Hamas. They chose to build terrorist infrastructure. They chose rockets. Mm-hmm. That's what they chose. Was it because of Israeli occupation? They're not being occupied. Governor, we've run out of time, unfortunately. You want to give out those sites again, your site and the Haley uh, site? Sure. So rondesantis.com is my site. We'd love to have your support. And then the micro site uh, for Nikki is therealnikki.com. And Mr. Producer, I want you to reach out to the real Nikki and to the real Chris Christie again and invite them to come on the program. I don't like inviting people. I like them to invite themselves. But what the hell, Governor? We'll give it another shot. Uh, take well, we'll care get of yourself. To, you'll get to see us all on that stage on Wednesday night. So uh, we'll Wednesday look forward night. to doing that, and I look forward to talking to you after the fact. You got it. Hopefully uh, they'll let you finish what you're saying. You know, that would be nice. All right, Governor, thank you. Take care, and best to your family. All right, God bless. Bye-bye. God bless. I had some other questions about China and so forth, but we uh, we ran out of time. And I'm serious, Mr. Bdus, to reach out to them. Again, 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 again. Uh, the limited edition, they're running out 21 days till Christmas, one day, I think, till Hanukkah. Uh, the limited edition, first edition, signed copies of the Democrat Party Hates America. We're almost at the end of that, but, ladies and gentlemen, and there's nowhere else to get a signed copy. We will put that link. I believe it's levinsigned.com. Is that correct? L-E-V-I-N signed, that's past tense, L-E-V-I-N-S-I-G-N-E-D dot com. Grab your copies while you can. People who have this book love this book. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we salute our armed forces, police officers, firefighters, emergency personnel. We salute our truckers, freedom fighters all over the world. And I got to start talking about Ukraine, too. It's looking pretty ugly over there as Biden hangs them out. We want to salute all our brothers and sisters in Israel. And I want to thank you, my audience. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for being here. And I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. 